had brothers and sisters who are back home from Kenya and we have something very important that we need to share with you like uh, with the people who came for the conference and with the people who are following the conference online um, before we get into the contents of the message let's just pray and cover everything in the blood of Jesus Heavenly Father we come into your presence Father, we commit everything that we're going to talk about in this video. We commit it into the hands of Jesus and we cover it in the precious blood of Jesus. Father, we cover the video, we cover its contents, we cover all the viewers in the blood of Jesus. We're asking, Lord, that let your Holy Spirit take over, Father. That we're only going to speak what you want us to say. We're not going to say, Father, what we want to say, but only what your Holy Spirit wants us to say. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So we had, a, we had a very successful conference in Kenya. We were so amazed at the overwhelming response from our YouTube subscribers. We had so many people who came through for the conference who were from our, who, who, who are the people who follow us on YouTube, on Facebook. Of course we had other people, but we had an overwhelming number from YouTube and Facebook and we're so grateful that you could make it. There were people who were coming from other towns and there were also people who were coming from far places within Nairobi, even from close by places. We're so grateful that you could find time to come and worship with us and hear what the Lord had for us during these days. And we're also so grateful to the people who were following the conference online. Yeah, may the Lord bless you. If it was up to me, I would rather not say anything. But because this is not about me, because this is not a personal thing, because this is about the kingdom of God and this is about his children. Therefore, I have to say something because the Lord asked me to say something about what happened and about what kind of deception was also among us at the conference. If we read the Bible in the book of Job, Turn your Bibles with me to the book of Job. Job chapter 1, verse 6. The Bible says, And there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Where do you come from? So this is now where God starts to recommend Job. But if you read verse 6, the Bible specifically says, When the sons of God came to present themselves to the Lord, even Satan came among them. And this is going to show you something, that Satan loves to be among God's people. Satan is not going to isolate from God's people and say, oh, I'm only going to be among the false, uh, the false prophets. No. But when the sons of God come, Satan wants to be among them because his mission is among the flock. His mission is among the children of God. His mission is among those people who are trying to walk on the narrow way. That is what his mission is. But again, if you read the Bible in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 11, the Bible says, And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. The Bible says that not only should we stay away from having fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but the Bible says that we have to expose them. That means that when I have realized that there is a problem, it is my responsibility to expose that problem. It is my responsibility to expose it. Not only should I say, okay, I'm going to stay away from this, but what about all those other people who are going to end up perishing? I need to talk about it. And that is the reason why I have decided to make this video. And I'm making this video on behalf of me and also on behalf of Zipora. We agreed to come up and make this video. Initially, we were supposed to do this video uh, on, on the last day that we spent in Kenya, which was the I think which was the sixth, but we didn't have that time. We had so much to do. And, and so we decided that we we're going to make the video when we were back home. 
So I decided that today I'm going to address this matter because it's a very serious matter that the Lord revealed when we were at the conference. Why am I talking about these things? I'm talking about these things because there are so many people who trust me and who trust my sister and who know for sure that we do speak from the Lord. And when these people see us with certain people, they let their guard down and they are, they are even going to ignore even what the Holy Spirit speaks to them to say this person is not of the Lord because they're going to think, oh, but uh, for them to be ministering with Rachel, for them to be ministering with Zipporah, then automatically whatever they're speaking, they're speaking from the Lord. But when we were there at the conference, we realized that even Satan was also there. And from the time that we went to the, to the conference, even all the way until the time when we returned, we have been in intense warfare, intense spiritual warfare. It was beginning of 2015 when the Lord showed me a vision and he showed me that even Satan is going to send his people, his servants. I'm not talking about people who are serving Satan out of ignorance, but these people are truly loyal to Satan. They are loyal to Satan's kingdom, not God's kingdom. And then God showed me that Satan was going to send these people among the flock and he's going to tell them that you go and preach holiness, you know, because there's a lot of worldliness in the church right now. And because the Lord has been speaking a lot against worldliness to say, you need to dress modestly as a child of God. You know, you need to be separate from the world. And then the Lord said that Satan's servants, they are also going to come among the flock and they are going to come and tell people to say, you need to dress modestly. You know, all these things are, belong to Satan. You know, as a child of God, you need to, there needs to be this distinction. You know, these people, the Lord said that they were going to speak even up to 99% truth. But the Lord said they have another agenda. Their agenda is not to bring people to the kingdom of heaven. They are going to teach people lies and they're going to imprison people and to make sure that those people are captives of sin so that they perish. Because the Bible says that a divided kingdom cannot stand. How can a servant of Satan bring people to the kingdom of heaven? It means that whatever they are doing, even though it's seeming like they are working for God's kingdom, what they're actually accomplishing is the opposite. It's the opposite. So, we first got an invitation from the host of the conference, Margaret. She's the one who wrote to me. I think she had written to my sister prior to that, but my sister didn't respond to her. But she wrote to me, inviting us to the conference that they were going to have in Kenya. So when we got the invitation, I spoke to my sister about it. And then we decided that we were going to say yes and accept to go just because this was an opportunity for us to go out and reach out to people who do not even have access to the internet. You know, because there are many people who may not even have access to the internet that they cannot even go on YouTube and watch the video. And because there's so much deception happening right now. And so we thought any opportunity to preach the gospel is a good opportunity. You know, any opportunity to let people know the truth. It's a good opportunity. And so we agreed to go. But after we had agreed to go, I think the time when, when they designed the posters, that was the time when we, re when we realized that there were also going to be these two strange people who were going to come to the conference. You know, when they invited us, they did not make it clear that we were going to share with, with uh, two other people. We did not know anything about these people. They were not people who were familiar to me or to my sister. You know, there was a lady from South Africa, and then there was another lady from Tanzania. And the host told us that, oh, we've, inv we've also invited these people. I know these people, this and that, you know. But 
we had no prior knowledge about who these people are. I had, they were not even people whom I had heard of or been following. I think the lady from uh, South Africa was the one whom I had once seen on a poster. I think somebody on Facebook had once shared a poster about a certain meeting and I, I, I remember seeing that lady's face, you know, but apart from that, I had never seen that woman, never followed her, never knew her teachings or anything. But when we arrived at the conference, when we went to Kenya, so we met these people now in person. The woman from the South African woman, we met her on the very first day. Then I think we met the other woman the next day at the conference. And when we met these people and we started to share, you know, they were talking about holiness, you know, they were talking about or about outward holiness, you know, speaking against worldliness, saying you need to dress modestly, you need to be holy, this and that, you know, and that, that all sounded good. And to be honest, the conference was a huge success. There were many people whom Jesus wanted to reach with the true gospel, and he did. So we do not have a regret on that. But as the conference progressed, the Lord started to show me and my sister some very strange things that were going on at the conference. The Lord started to reveal to us that this, this woman, you know, this lady from South Africa, you know, she's the one, if you, if you saw the, the videos from the conference, she's that lady who loves to wear white. She loves to wear white, like sometimes she wear white from head to toe because she had told me, and my sister, that, that she can only wear white, gold, or purple when she's ministering. And then she was saying, oh, that is an instruction. I cannot wear any other color. But that lady, when we were at the conference, you know, she was speaking all good and everything seemed all right. But while we were there, the Lord started to show us about who this woman really is. And the Lord revealed to me and to my sister Zipporah that this woman is not a servant of Jesus Christ. That this woman does not serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. This woman is not serving the kingdom of God. She was actually working against the kingdom of God. And somebody may ask and say, but all she was speaking against the spirit of Jezebel, all she was speaking against worldliness, which is exactly why I said when she started to speak, it all sounded all good at first until the Lord started to reveal to us who this woman really was and what exactly she was doing at the conference. And the Lord started to show me that when this woman, she, she, she was up on the pulpit and then she started to speak against the spirit of Jezebel. But in the spiritual realm, this woman was actually summoning these spirits to come up. And I remember I even posted on Facebook, that I think I posted like one time to say that we are under attack. And I posted that message when we were in the church. And I remember when the Lord had started to show me and also my sister who this woman really was. I had even texted a friend of mine, you know, when we were still in the church, I sent her a text and I, and I told her like, look, this is what's happening. Please keep us in your prayers. Because the Lord showed me that this lady, the lady who loves to wear white, she does not serve the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. She went to the conference with another agenda an agenda against the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And she seems like an angel of light, but even the Bible says, even Satan has transformed himself into an angel of light. And the Lord showed her to me how this woman was summoning the demonic spirits to come up. They, they were just coming up, the spirit of Jezebel, you know, the marine spirits. She was calling them and summoning them. But in the, in the physical realm, this woman would say, I'm binding the marine spirits, I'm binding this and this, I'm binding the spiritual spouses, I'm, bound, I'm binding the Jezebel spirit. But the Lord showed me when we were there that this woman, look at what this woman is doing. She's actually casting these demonic spells on the people 
And then she started to call up somebody when we were still there at the church. She started to call up somebody and say, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you because of this spirit that is following you. And then the Lord told me to pray against her. And then she started to, she started to say, I'm praying against this spirit, you know, but she actually wanted to inflict that person with that spirit. And I started to pray against her. And that's when she stopped to pray for that person. But the Lord showed me very clearly that she was summoning marine spirits. She was summoning those demons from the kingdom of Satan. She is not a servant of Jesus Christ. She is not even somebody who is living in deception to say that, oh, she doesn't know what she's doing. She is not innocent of any of those things. She knows exactly what she is doing. She is somebody who has been sent to say, go and talk about holiness. And once people are going to hear, to hear somebody saying, oh, holiness this, they are automatically going to trust you. And you know, what I realized when we went to that place was that these people wanted to use us to gain the trust of people who, who trust us. Because they knew that if those people who trust me and, and also my sister, you know, once they see us with them at that conference, then they're automatically going to think, oh, these must also be really servants of the Lord. And which is why I am very obligated to speak about this and even to warn the people so that if you decide to go and follow these people and follow their teachings, you're on your own, but you're not going to come and blame me or anyone to say that, oh, because we trusted you, that, that is why we trusted these people. The Lord wanted me to speak about it that he showed me this woman is, ser is not serving Jesus. She is serving the kingdom of darkness. And the Lord also showed me how this woman had this spirit that she was operating with that was imitating the Holy Spirit. I'm going to, I'm going to show you some screenshots, probably if I manage to, you know, of a message that I actually sent to a sister I think that was on the 2nd of December. The conference finished on the 4th of December. So the Lord showed this woman to my sister. And she was standing in the church. Then my sister saw that the whole place became like a graveyard. And this woman was there standing with a huge shovel ready to bury the people. So the Lord was showing that this woman is not leading anyone to salvation but that she is working against the kingdom of God and she only wants to kill, to steal and to destroy. That's why she was ready to bury the people. When we were there, you know, she started to say, don't wear black. You know, she announced this in the church and then she said, don't wear black, don't wear white and red. You know, if, because all these colors, you know, they are used by the kingdom of darkness. If you wear white and red or if you wear black, they are used by the kingdom of darkness. So make sure not to wear these colors. You need to know that, that witchcraft is in many forms. There's witchcraft where they wear black, but there's also witchcraft where they, those who practice that kind of witchcraft, they were completely white. From head to toe, they were dressed in complete white, but they are practicing witchcraft. So wearing a color, a physical color, isn't what is going to attract the Holy Spirit or attract demons. What is going to attract the Holy Spirit or to attract demons in your life is what you are wearing on your spiritual man. Because you can wear white in the physical, but in the spiritual, you are wearing black. You have stained your robes with sin. And that is the thing that matters. But this woman was teaching false teachings, false doctrines. And when she announced that and said, don't wear black, and she said, and especially women, make sure you don't wear a head covering that is black. And when she said that, you know, the Lord actually warned me. He warned me when I was there and said, if you're going to follow what this woman is, is telling you, because you are, you are going to fear her and say, oh, let me do what, she, what she's saying, even though you know that this is a lie. You know, the Lord actually warned me to say, then I'm going to leave you because then you have another spirit that is 
leading you. You are not listening to the Holy Spirit. You are listening to a strange spirit. And I actually had to make sure when I was there on the last day, I wore a black head covering because of that very reason. The Lord refused me to bow down to this woman's idol. He said, don't do it. Even my sister, she wore a, a black jacket the next day. I think that was like the next day. My sister wore a black jacket and she still wore a black head covering because the Lord warned us to say, don't follow strange spirits. Because the Lord showed me that the reason why this woman was teaching all these false teachings was because she wanted everybody to pay homage to these demons that she was working with. Because as I said, she is not innocent. She knows exactly what she is doing, which is why she comes up with all these false teachings. She wants people to pay homage to those spirits when they obey those rules to say, oh, don't wear black, or oh, don't wear white and red. And that is not the teaching that comes from the Holy Spirit. Because she said to me and my sister that, oh, don't eat beef. If you, if you eat beef, you're not going to be able to cast out a demon. That was what she said to us. She said, if you eat beef, she said, if you eat beef for as long as the beef hasn't digested, you can't cast out a demon. And then she was like, if you eat, uh, she said that if you eat fish, then it, 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 it can hinder your ability to conduct deliverance. And all these are strange teachings that are not from the Holy Spirit because the Bible clearly tells us if you want to eat something, eat. If you don't want to eat something, don't eat it. Everybody is free whether to eat or not to eat because it, it is the Holy Spirit who delivers people. It isn't, oh, because I ate beef, therefore I cannot cast out a demon. No, we know prayer and fasting is very powerful when it comes to conducting deliverance. But when you start to teach strange teachings of forbidding certain foods, the Bible calls that the doctrine of demons. So this woman wanted to, to cast people far away from the Lord. And then she got up on the pulpit. And then she said, if you have ever had a miscarriage, first she, she spoke of abortion, which is true. You know, just like the Lord said that they can speak 99% truth. She said, if you, if you have committed abortion, you are guilty of bloodshed. And that is true. But then she went on and said, if you have had a miscarriage, you are also guilty of bloodshed. And even without being spiritual, anybody can tell that this is a lie. Because people who have a miscarriage, they don't wish that. They actually feel bad and are heartbroken. They go, they, go, they go through grief. So how can someone who had a miscarriage, how can they be guilty of bloodshed? Those people are just victims. They lost a child whom they wanted so badly. So after the Lord had exposed this woman to us, then on Friday, she announced in the church and said that the next day, which was Saturday, she said she was going to get everybody in the church to be baptized in the Holy Spirit because the Lord showed us that this woman was even speaking demonic tongues. She was speaking in tongues, but you, you need to know that even Satan can speak in tongues. So she was speaking demonic tongues, summoning demons to come up. And then she said that on Saturday morning, which was her session, she was going to get people baptized in the Holy Spirit. And she said, everybody of you, you're all going to speak in tongues. And the Lord told me that she wanted to impart a demonic spirit on the people because the Lord showed me, as I say, that she has a spirit that she operates in that pretends to be the Holy Spirit, but it is a spirit of Satan. And she wanted to inflict people with the same spirit and say that, oh, I'm going to get everybody baptized in the Holy Spirit. And so we actually began to do warfare against that. And on the actual day, which was a Saturday, she stood up there and did a teaching. Then afterwards, she started to say, oh, now it's time for you to get baptized in the Holy Spirit. So all of you rise up to your feet and stand. And then now that you're standing, you know, start to do the motions of drinking because you drink. You know, Jesus says, all of you who are thirsty, come up and drink. And then she, she said to the people, let's get up and start doing the motions of drinking. And people started to do the motions of drinking. And she said, the more you drink, you know, the, the more thirsty you are, the more you drink and the more you're filled. So when the people started to do that, we started to do warfare against that. I was with my sister 
and we started to pray and calling for God to send his warrior angels to come and do battle against Satan. And when we started to pray, that was when she announced and said, I didn't tell anyone to pray, just drink. I didn't say pray, you need to follow instructions. And at that point, I knelt, I knelt down on my knees. I knelt down, my sister also knelt down and we started to do warfare and the people were, were still standing up. But we started to do warfare and to pray against her and to block the demonic spirits that she was summoning. And the result of that was that she failed to, to do she failed to do what she wanted to do. At the end of the prayer, she, she asked the people and said, how many of you spoke in tongues for the very first time? And only about three people, I think, raised up their hands, which was a huge failure because she had wanted everybody in that place to do it. But we rose up and we waged warfare against her to block her and we called for God to send his angels to block that mission. And she failed to impart that spirit on the people. I was very worried for the people, but the Lord spoke to me and he said to me, those who belong to me, no one can snatch them out of my hand. And when we were in the service, you know, the Lord gave us reassurance. My sister got a text message from one of the people who were in the service, who, who was right there in the church. And we were seated at the front. And this person texted my sister, and this was their message. And this lady from South Africa, she was up there on the pulpit during this time. And this woman says, sorry to say this, but I'm feeling a push to say so. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11 to 12, to expose the enemy. Be careful, my sisters. One of you is not of Christ. And I pray the person comes to repentance and may you be covered by the blood of the Lamb, that nothing will harm you. So this person, even without us saying anything, the Holy Spirit let her know to say there's something wrong with this woman who's sharing. She is not of God. And after that, we started to get several concerns, even from other people. There was a lady from South Africa, Sister Linda, and she said, I watched the online service. And... Something just didn't feel right about that woman from South Africa. And then she was like, and when I went to bed, you know, but she said it didn't feel right. But when she listened to her speaking, it sounded like, okay, maybe I'm judging her. Let me give, let me give it a benefit of doubt because she sounds like she's speaking the truth. And then when Sister Linda went to sleep that night, and she said to me, for the very first time in many years, I was fed food from dead people in my dream. And I had a lot of sexual dreams. And she said, this has never happened in many years. And then she said to me, and when I woke up, I was like, Lord, what's going on? But when I went back to sleep, then I had a dream. And in the dream, there was this huge upstairs mansion and then this lady, the South African lady, she came up, like she, she walked to where Linda was. And then she said, wait, let me go and call the ancient queen of the coast. And then she went up and started to call a strange name, calling to the queen of the coast to come up. And this is why I was saying that the Lord had showed us, me and my sister, that this woman was summoning marine spirits. The queen of the coast, that is just a principality that is in charge of all the water spirits. And it is the demon that is in charge of sexual immorality and immoral dressing and all those things. And she was summoning the spirit. The Lord had shown that to me and to Zipporah. She was calling the spirit of Jezebel. But this lady from South Africa, you know, she didn't even know the things that the Lord had shown us. But she too had a dream and she saw this woman calling the queen of the coast, which is that, a demon and saying, let me go and call the ancient queen of the coast. And she started to call a strange name so that she can come. So the Lord had, had done so many things to reveal this woman to people. You know, there were so many people, even during the conference, who were coming to me and saying, oh, I came here. But ever since then, I dream I'm in the graveyard. And the Lord had shown me even Previously, the Lord showed my sister, but I remember at the end of the conference, 
the Lord showed me that I had to call out to the people and say, get out of this place. You people are sitting in a graveyard. You are sitting in a graveyard. And so I believe the Lord sent us to that place because he wanted to set people free. Because I'm told that this South African woman, she's been to that church like several times, like four times. And imagine all the damage that she has done. So that was when I realized that this woman still does not have power if you rely on the Holy Spirit, because the Holy Spirit is going to reveal who she really is. She cannot pretend to the Holy Spirit. He searches the heart and he sees everything for what it really is. And when we were there, you know, the Lord allowed it for a purpose. But when we were there, we started to get so many concerns, even from other people who started to share the messages of what the Lord started to reveal to them about who this woman really was, which was exactly in line with what the Lord had told us to say that she is working against God's kingdom. And she is a false prophet sent to deceive by speaking about holiness and then to teach people to bow down to her demons, which was what the Lord showed us. So the other person whom we were sharing with was the Tanzanian woman, like I said. And if you remember when I texted my sister in Christ about it, I told her to say two people whom we were sharing with, they are not of the Spirit of God because that was what the Lord showed us when we were there. And the Lord showed us that they had one agenda together with the South African woman and that other lady from Tanzania. The Lord showed us that they had one agenda. They were not of God and they were not working for his kingdom. And what happened is that on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, uh, the lady from Tanzania was the one who was supposed to speak in the morning, then I was supposed to do the closing session in the afternoon. On Sunday morning, my sister Zipporah came to me before we went to church. She came to my hotel room and my sister said to me that the Lord had shown her a dream that morning on Sunday. And she said, the Lord showed me. And what the Lord showed me is that this lady from Tanzania when she goes up on the pulpit today, because the Lord had already shown us that these, these two people were all working by one spirit, which is not the spirit of God. And the Lord said to my sister in a dream that when the lady from Tanzania goes up on the pulpit, she's going to start to speak against you. And it is an attempt to stop you from exposing them. And the Lord showed my sister, and my sister told me that morning, and said, the lady from Tanzania, she is going to say that God showed her that there are people who talk about other people on social media and say that they are not servants of God and that these people are going to hell. So God showed my sister that this woman was going to say that we are going to hell if we talk about them, that they are not servants of God. And when we went to church that morning, Esther went up on the pulpit. And instead of her, when she went up on the pulpit, all that she began to say was just exactly as the Lord had shown us, exactly as my, as, as, and my sister had shared to me that morning. She rose up on the pulpit and she started to say the Lord showed her about, it, about someone, you know, who was speaking against the other servants and saying that they are not of God and saying if you do that, you're going to hell. If you go on social media and say uh, somebody is not of God, then you're going to hell. And then she began to say that even if you know that someone is not of God, don't talk about them. But the word of God says to expose 
the works of darkness. The word of God doesn't tell us to keep quiet. But this woman was saying, you need to keep quiet. And that was the message. If you go to her, her final message during the conference, that's all she talked about. And saying, oh, uh, the Lord showed me that there were, there were people who have a spirit of jealousy. And when they see somebody being used by God, then they get jealous. Then they start to accuse them of not being of God. And that was exactly what, what the Lord had shown my sister. And also she began to say, oh, there are people who have a spirit of pride that they only want God to show them. And if God shows somebody else, then they don't want to follow it. They are so proud, you know, just because we disobeyed, because the Lord warned us not to obey those rules about black or about all those strange rules, because the Lord said they are doctrines of demons and he warned us sternly not to do it. So this woman said that, you know, she started to speak about that and say, oh, there are people, they, they have a spirit of pride. They don't want to obey, you know, when it's somebody else who has been shown. But the Holy Spirit is the witness when someone is speaking by the Spirit of God. Even if God hasn't shown me, the Holy Spirit is going to bear witness and say what this person is saying is true. And the Holy Spirit is also going to say what this person is saying is a lie. But that was what the Lord showed us, that this was how Satan wanted to stop us from exposing them. Because so many people are going to trust them and they want to capture those people and lead them astray in a false, narrow way. Because the Lord showed us that these two people, they were working for one kingdom, which is not the kingdom of God. And that is why they were practicing all those strange teachings and doctrines. Even the host, Margaret, the one who called us to the church, you know, she rose up during the service and then she started to compel people and say, no, because, they've, they, because they have preached to you, then you need to give. I actually spoke against that even when we were during the question and answer at the church to say, to give to the Lord, it has to come from your heart. No one has to compel you and say, because I have preached to you, therefore you are compelled to give. And the Lord showed us that not only was this woman supporting the false doctrine, you know, the lady, the South African lady, at some point, she announced and said, anyone who, who, who was prayed for in this church, anyone who got deliverance in this church, you have to stay in this church. And then she also said, and you have to bring money. You have to bring a lot of money, even if it's 100, uh, even if it's 100,000 Kenyan shillings, which is a lot of money. You cannot compel people to give because you cannot, you cannot buy anything from the Lord. You give because you want to. Not because, oh, God gave me this, therefore, you know, let me, let me, let me give this to get this from the Lord. The Lord is against that. I even spoke against it when we were in the church. I spoke against that. That is not of God, and God is against that. You don't compel people to give. People give because they want to, not because you're forcing them. The Lord is against that. God only accepts giving. That is from the heart. But to tell people to say, oh, you need to give for you to be fully delivered, that is not of God. That is not of God. And that is what the lady from South Africa was telling the people. And this was all after the Lord had already shown us who she was. But what the Lord showed us when we were there was that these people wanted to capture people who trust us so that they can also trust them. But the Lord showed me that not only do they all support their false doctrines, false teachings, but they are all on one mission. The three of them, even the lady, the host, you know, they are all on one mission. They wanted to use us to capture so that when people see that, oh, they are associating with people. That is why I read in the beginning that when the servants of God were there, even Satan came. So just because you see a servant of God with certain people, it doesn't automatically mean that those people are correct. Even Satan will come among the children of God. And so I was compelled to come and make this video after the conference because the Lord showed me at the end of the conference, the Lord told me that I needed to lead people in certain prayers, which I did the last day of the conference. But the Lord showed me that these people are all working for one mission. 
the three of them, they were all working for one mission, for one kingdom, working against the kingdom of God. What they were seeming to work for isn't exactly what they are actually working for. It's the opposite. And on the last day, when we went back to the hotel, on the last day, the Lord gave me a vision where I was actually calling out to people to say, get out of this graveyard. You people are sitting in a graveyard. And I do believe this was the very reason the Lord sent us to that place. He wanted to set the captives free because people have been sitting in a graveyard. But the Lord is saying, get out of the graveyard. Go on your knees. Go and seek God in truth and spirit. Go and seek discernment from the Lord and let the Lord show you exactly where you are walking. And also I had to make this video so that no one is going to say, oh, it was because of Rachel and Zipporah. You know, they didn't speak. We spoke. When we went to that place, the Lord started to show us so many things. And I have shared uh, the main points of all those things that the Lord showed us about that place. On the final day, the Lord told me to lead everybody into certain prayers, which we did. And actually, the Lord showed me that a lot of people were set free that day. All the things that those people were doing to the people, they were completely undone. And God granted us the victory, you know. God truly displayed his power. Even during the conference, there were so many people who were set free from different spirits, you know, from different demons, people who were bound by different spirits, spirit, spiritual spouses, you know, the Incubus and Succubus spirits. People were set free from all those demons. Even though Satan was trying to fight the work of God, you know, but God was also there fighting for his people and he gave us the victory. So I had to come here. You know, I have nothing physically against these people whom I have spoken of in this video. I have no physical issue with them. But I have all these issues with them because they are working against my father's kingdom. They are working against the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And so I have to speak because if I do not, the Lord will hold me accountable for this. But what the Lord showed me and what I want to say, the Lord showed me these people, they had another agenda. When they called us to that place, they had another agenda. It was so that people may trust them to say, oh, they must be servants of God as well. They had another agenda. But what the enemy meant for evil, God still turned it around for good and for his glory. And they used the opportunity to plant false doctrine, but the Lord destroyed it. And on the final day, you know, the Lord told me, you know, that was when the Lord told me to say, don't say anything about what they have said. You know, we had to use a lot of wisdom when we were there. Because you cannot just come up and say, oh, this and that. You know, you have to use wisdom. Because you don't want to bring confusion. So... We had to act like everything is normal. But on the final day, the Lord told me that don't say anything regarding what the woman from Tanzania has said, you know, just as the Lord had told us to say she was going to speak in this way. And she also started to speak against prayer and fasting because just because the previous day that I was speaking, I was teaching on fasting and because when you do prayer and fasting, even your discernment goes up. Satan doesn't want you to fast. And that was why she started to speak against fasting and saying, oh, my sister uh, was told to fast. And yet it was a demon that told her to fast and, and saying this and that to say, oh, it doesn't matter if you don't want to fast. Don't fast and all those things. But God had already showed us that this woman is working against the kingdom of God. And this is why she's going, she's going to speak the things she's going to speak today. And when she rose up, she did not speak away from what the Lord had told us that she was going to speak. When she rose up, she spoke only the things that the Lord had showed us. And God was showing us to say, can you see what I'm telling you? That she is working against my kingdom and which is why we have to speak against it. Which is why we have to, to rise up and speak because the Lord showed me the last day that I went out 
and I started to call to people to say, get out of this graveyard. So in future, we decided that in future, we are not going to accept any invitation where we have to speak with some strange people whom we do not know. We can only speak with people whom we know, whom the Lord has approved. Apart from that, we are going to have to turn every invitation down. And apart from that, uh, the only meetings that we're going to have in the future, we decided that we're going to have uh, meetings on a neutral ground. You know, I didn't understand. Just days before we left for Kenya, my husband had a dream. And in the dream, he told me about the dream right there when he woke up in the middle of the night. And he said that he had a dream where I went to the, to the church in Kenya. But when I got there, then he said that somebody in the dream was saying that it, it would be better for you if your meeting was in an open ground, not in this church. So I didn't understand exactly what that message was. But afterwards, after all this happened, and then we started to say that it, next time we're going to have the meeting in an open area, maybe just an open crusade or something like that, so that we avoid any strange teaching and so that we give no place to Satan. So that's when I remembered my husband's dream about having a meeting in an open area, you know, not in that church. That was the dream that he had, and I didn't understand it at that time. But this was about the meeting in Kenya. Overall, the meeting was a huge success. God set so many people free. You can't believe it. On the last day, the Lord had asked me to lead people in these prayers. And afterwards, you know, so many people were set free. I saw captives set free, free from from a lot of bondages, even from things that they were being inflicted by Satan. But the Lord set so many people free and so many people, they heard the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Even though Satan rose up, the Lord Jesus crushed his head right there in the church and Satan was terribly defeated and he has forever been defeated. But the Lord has also given us more wisdom for the future going forward. We're not going to speak with any strange people because we don't know if you're going to start to bring up demonic doctrines. We don't know if you're going to bring up strange teachings. So we're not going to accept anything like that. We're only going to accept uh, to speak with, with uh, specific people because the Lord showed me there are so many servants of Satan who are lying in the name of the Lord and saying, God showed me this, God showed me heaven, God showed me hell, but these people are servants of Satan. So we need the discernment of the Holy Spirit. And I, I mentioned these three people that the Lord showed me that these three people are working together with one mission, working against the kingdom of heaven. And they wanted to use our being there to get people to trust them so that more people would trust them and say, oh, they are working with these people. They must also be servants of God, but they do not serve the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. We are not working in one mission, and which is why I'm obligated to speak about this.